Hello, uh, my name is Erhard. Uh, I'm a PhD researcher at the Center for Civic Media at the MIT Media Lab. And I think a lot about how do we grow as civic actors through our uses of technology and media. Not only that, but how are we actually designing these tools? Um, and who are those designers? What are the values that they hold? Um, so I think a lot about uh, this person here, this lab wielding participant, and however you may define uh, that person, uh, it's undeniable that the tools that they're using are growing more and more important to the practice of democracy. The, uh, the Facebooks uh, of the world, the Twitters of the world, um, the We the Peoples, and fortunately we have a nice framework from the Youth Participatory Politics Network to help us think about some of these practices. Um, and I want to emphasize this kind of voice and influence aspect of what the young people are doing through these peer-based acts, because influence suggests efficacy. Um, and efficacy is also a core design goal of most civic technology. They want their users to affect some sort of change when they use these tools. Um, but oftentimes, whether it's participating in a Twitter hashtag campaign or whether it's signing a change.org petition, often these things are, are emphasizing external political efficacy. And that's this term which reflects the ability of a power that be respond to your voice, right? It's actually them being able to take that and then make some change, which is great, right? That actually helps us make that change in the world. However, in order to sustain engagement, it's important that we think about internal political efficacy. This is our sense of our ability to do some work, right? Our sense that we have the knowledge, skills, abilities, um, and, and the platforms necessary to, uh, to do great civic work. And so we should be thinking about how we're designing for that. And I think if, des if we're designing for internal political efficacy, we're also designing for civic learning, because that's the kind of outcome we expect from learning and, and education that promotes these kinds of, of civic outcomes and practices that we care so much about. That's often what we talk about in this, um, in this um, in this conference and, and a lot of people care about that in their work. And so what does it mean to be looking at civic learning? Let's just kind of give a quick definition. I like Juliet Merrifield's uh, framework, actually. Um, so she breaks it down into knowledge, abilities, and dispositions. And a lot of the ways she talks about things are things that we've looked at in our research as a community, right? It's about collaboration. It's about reflexivity. But it's also about engaging with values and engaging in diverse communities of practice in this kind of way that we help support our dispositions toward kind of civic action. And I think this is critical because because without a disposition for civic action, this sense of wanting to be an agent and the sense that we can be agents of change, we don't have this internal political efficacy that allows us to activate that knowledge and abilities in productive ways. And so let's think about now how do we do that as a designer? Because I'm also a civic technologist and I design tool called Action Path. Um, now this is a mobile app that invites people to participate in local issues. So as you're walking down the street, um, you get a notification about a pothole or um, graffiti that's been reported, and you have an opportunity to update the status of that issue um, and then follow where that issue goes. Does it actually get resolved by the city? Um, and that's hopefully going to close that feedback loop. At least that's how I designed it or intended to design it. So I ran a pilot study um, of this back in New Haven in partnership with C-Click Fix, which is a major civic tech company based there, um, which collects these types of reports and submits them to city governments. Um, and as my, in my evaluation of that, I did interviews with all of the users and asked them how it had changed their view of the city. And this was, I was looking for stories of political efficacy here. I was looking for them to kind of have these types of experiences where they're seeing problems that they didn't realize existed, they're understanding that other people care about things and that makes them care about them, but it also I see you know, that they're giving me feedback on the design. Right? They're telling me that they don't understand how their comment matters, and this is telling me I'm failing as a designer on political efficacy. And so it's important that I measure this to know whether or not my intended intervention is working, because what is measured is what matters, and that's why I care about this so much. We have traditional measures of civic learning that are often survey tools. My goal is to figure out how we scale that up to the civic technology platforms that we're using more and more as part of our practice of democracy. And so I'm looking at ways that we combine data mining, ways that we can converge you know, networks of practices um, into kind of the civic activities that we care about and are emblematic of the civic learning that we want. And if we can find a good framework 
um, that is scalable and evaluative for civic learning. I think that's going to help us hold these civic technologies accountable and more importantly, help them hold themselves accountable because they're the ones that are going to be measuring these things on a long-term basis and making design decisions based on what they see. And so we need to get them to care about civic learning and we need to get them to measure for it. And that's what I'm trying to do in my dissertation. And so if you're interested in that, please follow, follow up with me later, connect with me. I'd love to talk with you about it.